G'day beautiful people, join us on this two-part episode as we investigate the amazing Windora area. Now we have a massive wish list of species including Parentes, Fear Snake and the Central Blue Tongue among other things. So be sure to stay tuned to see our successes and failures as we explore this incredible landscape. Right nature nutters, I know it's super windy but we came up the sand dune here to explore and there is just a stunning big monitor here. This is a proper monitor. Look at this dragon. Look at you, big boy. How lucky are we? It's all right, we're not gonna hurt you, mate. So the Gorana ran off that sand dune as you saw and we just found him and yeah look at him Brother Nature. <laughs> Look at those colors. It's gorgeous day. Take care of taking videos. In 4K. <laughs> make sure it's high quality. <laughs> You make sure you get my best profile I have. So blessed. Yes. Now nature nutters, let me introduce you to the jeweled gecko, Strephorius elderi. Now this is a particularly interesting little gecko because although at the time we didn't know who it was, we come to grow very familiar with this gecko as it revolves around a very interesting story. I'm not going to give up too much, but it's a future episode, so keep an eye out, it is a doozy. Oh, really cute dots and just gorgeous behavior. I'm going to put him on the sand so as you can see him just kicking around a little bit. What a gorgeous little baby gecko. Beautiful eye, isn't he? Look at this, looking at that thing in front of him. Mm -hmm. All right, nature nutters. This is a brilliant find. 
Mariella has been uh, begging for a little blue tongue. This is our second find here in Windora and we are absolutely delighted. This is the Western blue tongue. Now it differs from the one on the coast that you may be more familiar with. You can see just like the beautiful sand out here in the sand dunes, they've got this lovely camouflage sand dune marking across their back. But living up to their name, still have the beautiful blue tongue as well. Yeah, this is such a delightful little little lizard. Hmm. I thought they were only during the day. No, well, um, obviously when the conditions are right, they'll come out in the evening, take advantage of the cooler temperatures and uh, the abundance of prey that might be getting around in the grass at night. So, mm -hmm. yes, they are primarily uh, diurnal. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, this guy's out well into the evening. The really cool thing about blue tongues is that they can move incredibly quietly through their habitat. On sandy country like this, you can see that she's moving all four legs and obviously walking like normal <laughs> lizards. However, when there's heavy leaf litter or in the grasses, they'll drop their back legs and only pull themselves along the ground, kind of like a snake, but just using their front legs. And they literally swim through, giving them a really cool silent motion. Yeah, you'll rarely actually catch them moving through the grass. Right, Nature Nutters, we are loving our first night in Windura. This is the hooded scaly foot. So this may well look like a snake to you all but this is another one of the spectacular Australian legless lizards. You'll only just be able to see the last remnant of a little leg down here by my small fingernail. If I just gently tickle, he might, oh, hang on, he brought this side out. There you go, you can see yeah. his little foot there. That's yep. all there is to show for him being a skink. Now, if I were to mishandle this animal, he would, like other skinks, detach his tail as well so you've got to be very very careful handling these animals that they don't feel threatened and detach their their tail but this guy's being very pleasantly well behaved mm -hmm. and you can see that beautiful tongue when he flickers it this is the hooded scaly foot another species i've been looking in the book for for quite some time and always wanted to see and uh, here we are in Windora, finally getting them. So, woohoo! <laughs> Alright Nature Nutters, we're doing a bit of a recce around the Nature Reserve track. Uh, one of the locals has recommended we come down here and check it out. Now thankfully today it's dried off and the water's receded back, but one of our fellow herpers must have left some car bonnets here for us to check out. So uh, we're going to have a quick look at these and see if there's anyone home today. I'm just going to lift this up in case anything. Oh, Whoa. who have we got here? Oh, nice. This is Suda Suda, the my all snake. Oh, he's lovely. Look at him. Now, this is a little snake that can, is actually quite venomous and has a bit of a tendency to get a bit bitey sometimes. So you've got to treat them with a bit of respect and a bit of caution. We're obviously right out in the middle of the outback and we don't have any venines or anything like that we have our first aid and medical attention is quite a long way away so we obviously treat all snakes with respect but we're just going to present this snake so as you can see it uh, yeah. uh, look at this the local boys have been using these car bonnets as uh, target practice i think that's why they're actually really here Very nice little snake. Uh, what happened, huh? <laughs> we bought. Damn it. Knew it. <laughs> well, 
Wow. Here we go, we are we are in the shit. So what's going on? <laughs> what's going on is I'm just it's... testing out a bit of new full drive gear we bought. So I thought we'd come out. Okay, well I'll I'll stay out and film this from outside. Hey. Oh very good. Oh shit. Okay, as you can see, nature knows we were bogged right up to the axle, but thank god we were bogged right beside this corner post. If it had been anywhere else, we would have had a 15 kilometer walk. And I've got to take this opportunity to thank Runbar, our winch manufacturer. This thing definitely saved our life. Pretty efficient stuff, that thing, eh? What's the. Um just bought this Rumba winch. Pretty, pretty good stuff. Yeah, we knew we needed it. So, thanks Rumba. Welcome back, Nature Knows. We came out to see what the flood water is doing over the channel and we decided we'd walk up the edge of the creek in the flood water to see if we could find anything flushed out. Well anyway, I actually went back to the car to retrieve the car and Mariella continued walking and look what she's discovered for us. This old girl's had a um, bit of a rough, rough life, haven't she at last? It's all right, sweetheart. Oh, <laughs> she doesn't like brother nature. Look at those beautiful big talons for digging in the sand. Where she'll uh, scratch up prey such as taipans and brown snakes and grab hold of them and literally thrash them to death and whip them against trees and against the ground. And then once they're dead, she'll uh, manipulate it head first and just literally swallow the entire thing. Come on, give it a go. Yeah. Yay, wimp. You big Italian wimp. Well, nature knows, we've come down to the edge of this water course, hoping for a monitor or a snake patrolling. Now, I know this probably looks a bit weird to you, but this actually really excites me. This ephemeral pond that should be full of tap holes and or well, probably is, but right now we're in the very shallow portion of it, is actually full of brine shrimp. Something I did not expect to see, but when I was younger I used to look after aquarium fish and I'd raise these to feed my young juvenile baby fish. They're a really good nutritious food source for aquarium fish. And they were here laid as eggs. And as soon as this water arrived, and I might add it's probably not rained here for seven years, they're hatched out and here they are busy at work doing their little thing and it's amazing to see. Shortly this pool will dry up they too will lay their eggs and another seven years will pass by until this very thing occurs again. All right for those who may be interested this is the northern spiny tail gecko Strephorius ciliaris a relatively common yet incredibly stunning species. Now we never get bored of photographing and seeing these guys out in the wild and I'm sure it'd be the same for you out there as well. So if you're considering visiting Windora, here's some hints and tips on how to find them. We discovered that in the June spinifex habitat around Windora, you get these small isolated pockets of carimbias as seen in this footage taken from the drone. Well, we found at least one in five of these outcrops had a gecko in it. So if you use your spotlight directly up beside your eye, so as you get that refraction of light bouncing off the back of their eye, you get the eye shine. So you merely walk through the habitat, spotlighting those Corimbia groups, and you will stumble across one of these. So another really interesting thing we found with this particular gecko is they had a tendency to be facing downwards just a couple inches above the ground in an ambush position simply waiting for their prey to stroll past. So take the time to scan the lower portions of the vegetation and you ought to be finding these. Well nature nutters, be sure to stick around for part two where we try and knock off the rest of our wishlist species. 
Although the Coltar we didn't get on film, we still managed to find two of the eight, so what do you reckon the odds are of us getting the rest? I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the lovely people of Windora who were kind enough to help us, particularly the property owners that permitted us entry through their land. Without their kindness, a lot of these finds simply wouldn't have been possible. Now do old brother nature a favour, smash that like and subscribe button. You'll get the notifications for the next part. I'll tell you what, you want it because it's super juicy, there's some ripper finds.